Good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, July 13th meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. First, I would like to announce that this meeting is being recorded and ask if there's anyone in the audience who is also recording the meeting. Seeing none, could we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item we have is public comment, and we have Jim Rothera, who wants to speak on a planning board issue. Mr. Rothera? Jim Rothera, 51 Old Common Road, Auburn. Uh, the subject I wanted to bring before you tonight was the fact that the planning board on winter months is missing either one or two people and we decided that there was only two ways to take care of that, one being to get an alternate and the other being video conferencing. Now, I, we understood that through Mr. Benoit that the only people that were able to okay this was the Board of Selectmen. So I'm coming before you tonight to try to make you understand that every major corporation in the United States uses video conferencing. Everybody on the planning board has the ability, the technology to use video conferencing. Uh, so basically what I'm asking you to do is to look into the fact whether or not we could use that. So when I'm away in the winter months and some other people are, that we could plug into our iPads through FaceTime or Skype and uh, participate in the meetings just like we were there. Great. We can, um, we can, if you wouldn't mind, if you could put, you know, with the, the remainder of your members as well, put something into writing just requesting that the Board of Selectmen um, take a vote to take a position on this. Um, if you can get that letter to us in the next couple of weeks, we can, it would have to be no later than a week from Wednesday. But we, we can, meet tomorrow, so I can get okay. you the, yeah, and then we can, can put get it, it back to you quick. We can put it on the next selectman's agenda mm -hmm. with, um, with your request and get the information of the, um, the state's position on the Board of Selectmen um, taking a vote on that. Very good. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. The next item we have is a presentation of a proclamation to the Auburn High School Junior Varsity softball team. And in attendance, I see we have many, if not all. I'm not sure how, how many are here for this, but um, congratulations. If as many of you can fit, go right up to the podium. We have a presentation, and I'm sure we have some, some nice words we'd like to say as well. So just go up to the podium. And even to, to, to embarrass you further, it would be nice if you could, one at a time, come up and, and give your name so everyone at home knows who you are. We'll start at this end. <laughs> I'm Alexandra Simonian. I'm Madison Boulay. I'm Elizabeth Simonian. Alicia Murphy. Abigail Lloyd. Victoria Simonian. Lauren Kennedy. Lindsay Berthium. Sophia LaPearl. <laughs> Abby Fahey. Thank you. And we have coach here. Well, Lionel has an email from the coach, so if you want to. If you can come up. I understand you have an email to read. Yes, I have. Thank you, Mr. Berthium, for being here. This is an email from Coach McKenzie. Uh, she writes, good evening. First, I would like to thank the Auburn Board of Selectmen for inviting us to be recognized. I cannot even put into words how sorry I am that I could not attend tonight. Just know that I am so proud of all of you ladies and cannot wait to follow you on your high school journey with softball. 
the season had started off like most any other softball season. We had a vigorous first week of tryouts, followed by unpredictable weather, prohibiting us to t have a consistent schedule and many cancellations. It seemed as though we were never going to get a game in. But to my surprise, these girls came day in and day out working through all of our frustrations. When we finally had our first game, the girls played great, as they did throughout the rest of their undefeated season. These girls worked harder than any group of players that I have ever had the pleasure of coaching. Their individual perseverance, as well as team efforts, were undeniably amazing. They always supported each other on and off the field and gave others tips if I couldn't get my point across, which was often considering the amount of drills we touched upon daily. They didn't need prompting to cheer for each other during those games such as Grafton and Northbridge. Even when we were behind, their spirits were up and positive. That alone speaks volumes of their individual character and team ethics. Needless to say, this is an extraordinary group of girls to watch out for over the next two or three years at Auburn High. And I couldn't have been more proud to be their coach. Thank you all for an incredible final season here at Auburn. Go Rockets, signed Coach McKenzie. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And Mr. Smonian, I'll let you go first. Um, just a couple of things. Um, kind of echo what um, the email that the coach read. Um, another large reason for these girls, the parents that are here, some of the parents that are in this group spent many years coaching, started, um, I had some of these girls back in T-ball, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. LaPearl, Ms. O'Shea, I don't think I missed anyone, all gave time to uh, coaching and some or all of these girls along the way and are all part of that um, where, the, where they stand today. Um, I've seen the same thing year after year. Um, the amount of work they put in, the learning they've done and where they've come from uh, 15 girls chasing after the ball after it was hit. So um, with that, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. It really is. I, I can't say more. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Brotherton. Well, being a high school Auburn High graduate from 197, well, just being a graduate from Auburn <laughs> High, um, <laughs> girls weren't really big into sports back then. Um, so I really commend each and every one of you, and I wish you the best of luck, and I'm going to look forward to following you in your next couple of years. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. And I'll just say congratulations. I watched you all come in today, and you came in as a team, as a group, and you can just see the support that you give to each other, although you're even just a little nervous coming in before the Board of Selectmen being on TV. You were supportive, and you were a team, and, and I can see you guys doing great things because not many seniors here, right? Uh, so you're all coming back next year? So I, I probably we'll see you again next spring so congratulations so we have um we have a proclamation for you which i'll have mr simone and go over and hand to you and i'll read all right the town of auburn board of selectmen proclamation whereas the board of selectmen of the town of auburn wishes to recognize the outstanding achievements of auburn's youth and whereas athletic excellence through hard work and perseverance is a worthy of it effort to acknowledge and for all to emulate, and whereas the Auburn High School Junior Varsity softball team has performed at a high level of excellence during the 2015 season, and whereas the Auburn High School Junior Varsity softball team has achieved honor for their school by com <clears throat> completing an undefeated season in 2015, and now 
Therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Arbor, Massachusetts, hereby acknowledge this day, July 13th, 2015, the Auburn High School Junior Varsity softball team for their accomplishments during the 2015 season and congratulate them on behalf of the proud citizens of their hometown of Auburn, Massachusetts. It's signed by Chairman Holstrom, myself, Doreen Goodrich, Mr. Simone, and Mr. Carpenter, and Mrs. Brotherton. So congratulations. Any of you girls want to say anything? Do we have? <laughs> Come on, who's the team captain? Who's, who's the team captain? <laughs> oh, we have co captains? Wow. Come on up, girls. <laughs> At least say something nice about your coach. <laughs> Good girls. <laughs> well, I wasn't really prepared for a speech, but uh, <laughs> I just want to thank you for like the um, the recognition of our team and how like great and the great the girls were this year. And um, I really love playing with them, and I hope for next year. Yeah, too. you guys are awesome. Yeah. No, no one's ever prepared for a speech. We do this, <laughs> no, we, it's we a little do this to everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, so congratulations and thank you, parents, for the, coming in. The parents will get it to the school, so some, right. somebody will. So, Mr. Berthium, did thank you want to say something? I see you moving in. <laughs> well, I, I think the, uh, the, the coach McKenzie definitely should be recognized. Um, she uh, stayed up here, coached the team. Her husband is in the service down in Virginia. Um, they, she just moved down there. That's why she couldn't be here tonight. Um, and they're expecting to go down a little bit later, but she found out that she had to move down a week earlier because uh, the school in, um, in initiation um, programs that she had to go to for her kids. So she spent a lot of time uh, with these girls and with two young children getting them taken care of and so I just think that that she deserves uh, a round of applause as well yeah well thank Absolutely. you for sharing that with Absolutely. us so well, we'll take a brief recess in case anyone wants to do any pictures and then mm -hmm. just like three minutes okay. motion to recess second all those in favor we're in recess just so we can Call the meeting back to order. The next item on the agenda is a um, an application for a common victuals license for J and H Yogurt Inc. That was a 705 hearing. Is there a motion to open the hearing? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. The hearing is open. Is the applicant here? If you could come up to the podium, please give your name and spell it for the record, and then tell us a little bit about what your um, plans are. Okay. Uh, my name is Jean. Uh, last name is Ren. I'm um, looking for the location at A54 South Bridge Street. Um, there was a dancing studio before. Right now, I'll try to build up a yoga, uh, healthy yoga ice cream store. I, I saw many uh, ice cream store, regular ice cream store around the town, but I never saw one for like a frozen yogurt. They probably in the Star Bridge or Webster, they're doing very well. They bring a lot of communications for the young people, so they like a healthy yoga store. So that's why I set up one in the Auburn town. I think we can do better over there. Okay. And you met with the um, DCG yes. group? Yes. And do you, um, do you have any questions on the recommendations? Are you aware of the conditions that they've recommended? Just that the applicant shall first obtain all necessary permits annex and inspections from da town departments, boards, and commissions. And then you'll um, obtain any necessary approvals from any state agencies. Yes. So if the board approves that tonight, you know that you have to do that first, even yes. if we give you a license. Yes. Okay. Yep. Do members have any questions? Mr. Simonian? Just, just one. Under brief narrative of what is being done at this address, there's a word and then class, and neither Mrs. Brotherton nor I can read. It was, um, I'm sorry, I asked about that early. 
this. So he put dance in class. It was prior, oh, previously a dancing previous. studio, oh, and that's okay. what he thought okay. is being done now. Okay. So, um, so, so I think that um, the board would like to hear a little bit about the operation because that's where in that um, that slot you would have told us what you're going to do for business. Yes. So you're going to have an, a, a frozen yogurt business? Yes, it's a frozen yogurt business. And how many employees are you going to have? Uh, probably three. Three. Yeah. And um, what are your hours of operation going to be? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, you're going to be open seven days a week? Oh, uh, yes. And you're going to be open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Um, we, that's what we design right now. That maybe we will switch a little bit on the future because in the winter time, we probably will open a little bit late, like okay. around noon time yeah. to nine o'clock in the night because of winter. Okay, yeah, so so much. if if we approve your license for nine to ten, you can't open before the nine, and you can't stay open later than the ten. You can come in late and you can close early, sure. but you can't go outside of those hours. Sure. Yeah. So, um, okay. do we have questions? Is there any public comment or question? Seeing none, is there a motion to close the hearing? Motion to close the hearing. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Is there a motion regarding the application? I'll make a motion to approve um, the common victual license for J&H Yogurt Incorporated, um, keeping in mind the DCG guidelines. The recommendations on Recommendations. The, yep. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Your license has been approved. Good luck with your business and just check in to make sure that you have all the licenses that you need. I will. Thank okay. you very much. All Appreciate right. it. Thank okay. You. Good luck. Good luck. Um, next under communications, we have um, a letter from the Attorney General's Office regarding Articles 9 and 10 of the General Bylaws and Article Elect Article 11, excuse me, the zoning bylaw of the March 24th, 2015 special town meeting. Ms. Jacobson. Uh, through the chair, thank you very much. I wanted to just uh, keep the board up to date on the process for the bylaw review that we undertook uh, three years ago now, moving forward through the process. At the special town meeting on March 24th, 2015, Articles 9 and 10, uh, were related to the general bylaws. Article 11 was related to the zoning bylaws. So let me just first talk about Articles 9 and 10, which are the general bylaws. The Attorney General, in consultation with our town council uh, a couple of weeks ago, had mentioned that there is a Supreme um, Court decision that is pending on SORIs, S-O-R-I's, and therefore the bylaw that was approved related to SORIs may be impacted by whatever that decision is. So town council discussed it with the attorney general and looked at our options. Our options were we could hold the entire thing and wait for the SJC decision, which they believe would be coming shortly, and extend it under the law. We're allowed to extend it once for 90 days. Or we could have the attorney general tentatively approve of those and we'd have to go back to the Attorney General for review if the SJC decision came out differently. So what was agreed upon with myself and Town Council and the Attorney General's office is we would extend it for the 90 days and do the entire package at once. Administratively it made more sense to take it all together. Uh, this also provides the opportunity for the Town Administration and Department Heads, which we're working on, to provide our recommendations to the Board of Selectmen for the fees and fines that the bylaws would establish. So our intent is to provide those fees and fines to you, excuse me, to the uh, Bylaw Review Committee first over the summer. Have them review it, make any recommendations, and come the bylaw review committee would then come back to this board with a recommendation for your consideration for fees and fines, which I assume would then go to a subcommittee to look at those fees and fines. This gives us some time to do that. Uh, we'd like to have those fees and fines tentatively ready to go, so when the AG's office gives their approval, the fees and fines will be ready to go. If you notice on the second, excuse me, the, the first page of the next letter, which is the second page in this attachment, uh, under Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 32, general bylaws take effect on the date that the posting and publishing requirements under the law are satisfied. So once we get the Attorney General's approval within that 90 days, we would have to do appropriate posting of it that's done by the Town Clerk's Office. The dates that those bylaws are posted become the effective dates. Now, 
the other bylaw that I want to mention was the zoning bylaw, and that was Article 11. Article 11, also approved at the March 24th Special Town Meeting, uh, provided a mechanism for the Board of Selectmen to appoint two alternates to the Zoning Board of Appeals. That has been approved by the Attorney General's Office, and under the law, zoning law bylaws take effect on the day that they were approved by Special Town Meeting, or Town Meeting. So town meeting approved it March 24th, so retroactively that is now approved. The posting requirements were met by the town clerk's office. It had been, has been appropriately posted, and the board can now go forward and make their appointments. Okay. Uh, so I could meet with the chair and talk to him about when he might want to get something like that on the agenda. In the interim, if you so direct, we can advertise. Uh, there is one person still in the seat, um, but not officially acting in that capacity because there was no authority, but still in the seat. Okay. And then there would be one additional seat, and, or we'd post both. So we're happy to post the vacant seat, and then you could go forward. Do, do we want to make a motion to post the vacant seat so we can be prepared at the next meeting? Um, if, if the other two members who aren't here won't be caught by surprise. Uh, uh, through the chair, maybe what I would recommend is if you want to take a vote for us to post the open seat, we could post it for, you know, three weeks uh -huh. or so. Uh, because it, given that fact that it's summer, we want to make sure people have a chance to see it and get an application in. So maybe we make sure it gets out there. So it wouldn't necessarily have to be the next meeting. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to make sure that Mr. Holstrom and Mr. Carpenter have enough time to be aware beforehand. So I, we could push it out one, one more meeting beyond the next one. So we just need a motion to post the open position? Yes. I'll, I'll make the motion to post the open position for the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Alternate. Alternate. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed, so voted. Thank you. Do you have anything else on that? No, I'm all set. Okay, Thank great. You. Thanks. Uh, there are no gift acceptance under proclamations. Um, we have a request for a proclamation recognizing the merger of Brookdale Senior Living Solutions with Emeritus at Eddie Pond Woods and Lodge, and the name would be Brookdale Eddie Pond East and West. Is there a motion to approve the proclamation? Motion to approve the proclamation Is for there Brookdale Senior Living Solutions with uh, Emeritus at Eddie Pond Woods. Okay. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Just under discussion for the board's um, information. I'm sure you see there is an invitation to attend the ho open house and ribbon yeah, cutting, and I believe the is. ribbon cutting is promptly at 4 p.m. Actually, I'm going to amend that motion um, with the actual name because the name that the Brookfield Senior Living Solutions is the current. The new name will be Brookfield, Brookdale, Brookdale Eddie Pond, Pond East, East and West. West. So right. I'll amend my motion to include the name it will be not the one it currently is okay through the chair uh, just a reminder that the board may should probably come in by wednesday this uh, this um, event is thursday okay. so everyone should come in and sign the proclamation probably by wednesday we right. can get it prepared tomorrow okay. and have it ready for signature on wednesday or thursday morning even but the event is thursday afternoon okay do we want to do that? Do we think all members will be available, or should we have Sharon do an electronic signature? It still looks nice if she uses a script signature. Um, I, that's that's fine with me. I, if I think we'll given do, the given the short time frame, Sharon, if we could do an electronic script signature for oh, members. Sure. sure. Okay. Great. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you. Next, we have a drain layers application for RSI Construction LLC in Charlton. Um, we have the application. We have um, experience related um, jobs of recommendation, the certificate of liability, and the um, recommendation from Mr. Mitchell, the source of sewer commissioner per our policy we don't require that they be here and they are they have the application fee in the amount of one hundred dollars and are recommending approval is there a motion motion to approve the drain layer license for rsi construction llc is there a second second all those in favor 
Aye. Any opposed, so voted. Thank you. The next item we have is a drain layers application for new tech construction in Auburn. Per, um, per the Board of Sewer Commissioners vote, they are recommending denying the issuance of a drain layers license to new, new tech construction in Auburn. The decision was based on the past experience with this company and the lack of compliance to the rules and regulations regarding sewer connections attached to the appl application. A motion or do members want a minute? Or we can hold this item well, until we have a full board. I, I just a comment which because I don't I don't know if we've discussed this before, it just it's kind of all over the place. I take the, the application before the last it's please give name and address of the last five sewer related jobs done. And this person did did that, gave the names and addresses, um, listed five. This one has one, a note that says, all others are three or more years, and please see attached for past experience, which the attachment for past experience, I don't, but if, if either it's a requirement or it's not, and I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that, but some people list five, some people list three, this person listed one. I know we have the recommendation of Mr. Mitchell, and I don't question that at all, but, we put it in there, so I don't know, either, either maybe we should change that to maybe three or something, make it easier, I don't know. I'm, I, I just pointed out, because it, it varies from application to application, and it does say five, and some people do, and some people don't. So. Through the chair, I did ask Mr. Mitchell about that, and the reason there are not five listed, and there are, they are supposed to put their last five, they may not have five, they may only okay. have three. In this case, there was only one job, and it was not complete, it was still in progress. The other jobs were older. Uh, the sewer commission, my understanding from Mr. Mitchell is they did not pursue this because they were not recommending it anyway, regardless of what was listed here because they've had significant problems with this particular Oh, this one's contract. not recommended. This is not this recommended. Not recommended. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. So had it been recommended, yes, they, they, it probably would have been an incomplete application, but um, it, that is the reason that sometimes... I missed the word deny. My fault. Right. Yeah. I missed the word deny. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's fine then. I'd... I'd like to make a motion that we deny the drain layers license for new tech construction. Um, as per the Board of Sewer Commissioner's recommendation. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, so voted. Thank you. Next item we have is a vote to appoint one member of the um, Auburn Republican Town Committee to the Board of Registrars. In your packet, you have a letter from um, Deb Grimo. You also have additional emails regarding this appointment. And this appointment would be made to finish out the term of Sue Weagle, who, um, who is no longer a registrar, due to, you know, to be sure they had a balance board. So her, her term would have um, ended in 2017. So this appointment would be um, 2017. Is there a motion? So one of the three? Yeah, and the f I just um, will point out that the top letter from the Republican Town Committee re re recommended Jerry Belayan, mm. and then they followed up with a need to have three names because to meet Mass General Law. Was that a separate email? Or? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, Thanks, Steve. 5E. All right, that was part of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I'll make a motion to recommend. Um, Jareer Belayan as the uh, registrar. Is there a second? Um, second. And to, to, to a term to expire in 2017? A term expiring in the year 2017. And there's a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you. Um, 
And the next item is a change of address for BJ's Wholesale Club gas station. The Board of Selectmen recently approved a storage light tank license for the new BJ's Wholesale Club using 17 Sibley Street in Auburn as an address. The business has been assigned a new address, which is 782 Washington Street, Auburn. This is an administrative change and does not require a public hearing. So this is just kind of a housekeeping issue oh, okay. on the um, underground storage tanks. That the the only thing that the board um, I recused, but I can participate in this just for a um, housekeeping issue to have their official address as um, 782 Washington Street, Auburn. Through the chair, the reason for that, uh, first of all, the, that change is done by the fire chief and the assessor. And the reason was very simple that uh, 17 Sibley Street it, in and of itself did not have access. So the access is actually off of uh, Washington Street. Okay. Um, so motion to change the business address um, for BJ's Wholesale Club from 17 Sibley Street to 782 Washington Street. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So vote. Next we have town manager items. The first item is an update on the 2015 Green Community Grant from the Department of Energy Resources. Mrs. Jacobson. Uh, through the chair, I am pleased to inform the board and the public that we have received uh, the Department of Energy Resources Green Community Competitive Grant. We were, uh, this grant was announced last week at an event in Natick, and there were 51 communities in Massachusetts that received grants. Uh, we received the amount of $157,095, and it will be for projects uh, that are listed here in Town Hall and the police station, all of which were done to improve our energy efficiency, reduce our energy consumption, and at the same time uh, save energy costs. So we will be meeting with the state. Uh, we received the draft contracts. We'll be meeting with them to make sure that we're going forward with all three of these projects. There is the opportunity, I am told, to shift dollars within these three, uh, within these three projects so that if the dollars did not cover any one or all of these, we could shift some of it so that it did. Uh, we did apply for about $235,000 initially for a, a very long list of projects and the state had such competition for this that they were not able to fund the entire grant amount which was the maximum of 250,000 so we're thrilled that we got the hundred fifty seven ninety five dollars it's it's great to have that uh, we will now take a look to see if there's another opportunity to perhaps fulfill the entire scope of services that we came up with for the energy savings and if not working with the funds that we have we'll definitely be able to accomplish a lot including the uh, conversion here in the town hall building from oil to gas, which would be great. The Merriam building was not funded through this particular grant, even though we applied for it, because the payback period, uh, one of the reasons that was, I am told is because the payback period was too long. The state looks for pay payback periods of about three or four years, and that was about 10 years. Uh, the building is very, very old. Uh, it needed a lot more work than even the town hall building needed. So we are still gonna be looking to see if we can get that done through our CIP or other other mechanisms because it's important it will save us money the system does not work as you know um, it really needs to be upgraded so we're going to meet with the state and see what our options are but we are just thrilled to have this grant it, as I said it was very competitive there are now 136 green communities in the state and there'll be additional ones that are being announced this fall so it's great that uh, the, the statistics are that I believe one-third of the population of Massachusetts now lives in a green community and the challenging part is that for those communities that are green communities, it becomes more competitive when you apply for grant funds. But that's okay. We're, we're thrilled, and we were very glad to uh, be part of the event. Secretary Matt Beaton from in, uh, Energy Resources was there presenting, as well as Lieutenant Governor uh, Polito and the Commissioner of DOER. So it was a really nice event. We were thrilled to be part of it, and we want to thank the state for their assistance. Great. And congratulations. At you know, for being such a highly competitive grant, you know, congratulations to you and to your team who participated in putting the overall packet together to send the state. Still two thirds of what we asked for, so that's Good. that's pretty. Mm -hmm. No, thank you, and I want to make sure, and thank you for saying that. To thank Eric Lesperance, he is our energy manager, and he did 
an enormous amount of this green community grant. He, he put so much together and he also had help from Joe Fahey from the school department and Bill Coyle. So it really was a team effort. Uh, they did a tremendous job. This is a really technical, tough grant to pull together and I, I want to thank them. They did an excellent job. Thank you. And the next item is also related, the letter from the Department of Energy Resources regarding municipal aggregation. Correct. Uh, I just want to keep you informed on the progress of the town's application for a municipal aggregation plan. So we were able to get through the process of the Department of Energy Resources very quickly. So I want to thank uh, the Senator and Representative, Senator Moore and Representative Frost for their advocacy on our behalf because that particular process could take a long time and it did not. It was done in record time. I, I think in a matter of a couple of weeks we had a meeting with DOER. And, uh, it was about a two-hour conference call where they asked uh, questions of us here at Town Administration, our aggregator, municipal aggregation consultant, Colonial, and the state, and we were able to respond to their questions. And as a result, they uh, gave us this letter of approval at that level. So the next step is that it's now off to the Department of Public Utilities. And the Department of Public Utilities now follows their process, and there will be a public hearing that they hold down in Boston I believe it's uh, Monday, August. I think it's uh, still a rushed. Yeah, yeah it's hearing, very rushed. Excellent. I believe it's August 11th, but I will, I will double check that date. I'm sorry, I just got confirmation on that today, and that is absolutely a very, very quick, quick process. They'll still have to go through the review, so there'll be a public hearing in Boston on this uh, on this particular plan. I believe it is on the. Uh, give me one second. Um, it's on the 10th, 17th in Boston. So plenty of time to give you additional information. I plan on attending uh, along with uh, probably Matt Benoit, our town planner, and Eric Lesperance, the energy manager, and Colonial, our energy consultant, would represent us anyway, even if we did not attend. But we, we wanted to go and show as a team that we are behind this plan. So it's moving along. We're excited. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get our approvals in place in time for going out to bid and getting some good prices for, for the fall, for the start of the winter. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that things are moving along. I recall at the hearing that we were told it could, this process could take months. So to a year, it's good right? to hear that we were able to push it through. Uh, do you have anything else? I am all set. Okay. Mm -hmm. Under table items, it's just a discussion and review of the proposed um, policies as submitted to the subcommittee. Um, Denise and I are both here, so we'll just let Mr. Smonian know that we have met um, because there were only three here tonight. We will be prepared to bring it to the full board at our next meeting. We have a recommended um, policy for um, the interview and appointment process. We have a recommended policy for um, recognizing um, retirees, honorees, et cetera, for um, their accomplishments. We have a um, recommendation regarding a request for um, presentations um, that Mr. Carpenter had asked about. And we are still working on, but um, it's very complex and complicated, the outdoor entertainment policy. So we will have all of that with information in your packets. We'll give it to Sharon so that everyone has it in their packet so they have time to review it. And that will be before the full board at our next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, of course. Uh, through the chair, thanks for letting me jump back in. I did, I, it's not on the agenda, but I just want to thank everybody who was involved in the Independence Day event this year. It was, it was a great success. We really, our CERT team is incredible. They were out there, the police, fire, DPW, um, health and code, buildings, planning, recreation. I don't, I don't want to leave everyone out. I, I would tell you that there probably isn't a department or division in the town that isn't involved in this planning. If we start in January and it takes a long time to plan it. We meet on a regular basis until we pull all the pieces together and it really, it is teamwork that pulls it off. We had everybody involved, Senior Center. Um, it, it's really, it's, it's a great event. It's a great community event. This was our highest attendance yet. We had estimated over 10,000 people wow. Wow. attended this. Uh, and some people said, how do you know that? You know, we don't know exactly, but we know exactly how many parking spaces are available at the mall. We know what the parking spaces are along the streets. We've marked them off, we're, we're aware of it. So through some estimating, we can come up with a very conservative number, you know, two to three people a car. It's probably higher than that, and we can't even count the people who walk in. 
So it was, it was excellent. The buses ran great. We really want to thank our sponsors, the Worcester Regional Transit Authority. They provide the buses for us. And um, also Hometown Bank. As you know, you accepted a check for the concert, mm -hmm. so they paid for the concert. And the Auburn Industrial Park gave a donation toward the event, so all of the costs uh, get offset by generous donations and what doesn't comes out of the revolving fund from programs and events. Yeah. So it was an excellent event. We want to thank everybody, the veterans who participated, all the elected officials who participated, and just just to see all the families out there it was yeah. really it's exciting to see the families the uh the facility get used the way it gets used we do have a wrap-up meeting that we plan internally we're going to have that tomorrow after every event we meet and just go over the logistics see if there's anything we can improve take notes make a report and then next year we know what we might need to do to improve it so i just want to thank everybody for all their work Okay, and I was going to mention that in a public comment, but I had pe people approach me that it was just, you know, after the fact, just saying it was a fabulous event. And I also heard that most of the vendors were very happy that some of them even ran out of food. So so that if they sold out on the product they, they brought, then they did well. So congratulations on another successful event. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Are there any member board? board member items. I, I just have something. Um, I don't want to have the discussion here. Obviously, it wasn't on the agenda, and but for um, possibly at a future meeting. And I don't, I don't necessarily think it should be a, a member item. Uh, I've been reading a lot in the last couple of months about um, the recycling costs increasing. Um, single stream recycling apparently is not panning out to be what everyone thought it was going to be. And across the board, it seems that most of the people who are considered experts in the field are saying that m municipalities are going to incur uh, increased costs. So I, w I would just, when the whole board's here and possibly our rep um, or liaison, uh, Amy Sullivan, have, you know, a discussion about, you know, what, what all this is going to mean to Auburn and what, you know, what are potential things down the road that um, we may have to do or, or you know, start looking now um, at a way to offset. If, if that cost increase due to single stream is in fact coming, um, I'd rather be proactive than reactive and try to figure out what, what we need to do um, as early as possible. So I, I just, it's probably bigger than a member item. Mm -hmm. So okay. just, we, can, uh, we can put that on the yeah. next agenda I, to I'll, have the board vote right. to ask the solid yeah. Waste Advisory Committee yep. for a report, okay. and um, when that report is ready to come in before the board yeah. to present it. So we'll put it on the next agenda to have the board take the vote to ask the Solid Waste Advisory Committee for a report. Yeah. Okay. okay. Since it's not on tonight's agenda. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Is there any additional public comment? Seeing none, we have three have minutes. Let me just check here. Mm -hmm. I don't think we do right. Mm -hmm. There are no minutes. Is there a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned.